and see our crowd growing even this second night. We are very happy for this and trusting that there was a great time here last evening. How the Lord blessed. And I haven't talked to Brother Sullivan today to find out just how the altar service finally come out. Wonderful. Good. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, when we get souls saved, then God is pleased. That's the first thing. And we usually, when we're going to have a few nights like this, why, we always try to have the altar services and things first because it's written, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then other things will be added. And I'm uh, happy for that. And we all want to find all the favor with God that we can find because we need all the grace that he can bestow upon us. I'm speaking for myself. If I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at brother and sister kids sitting down here. So glad to see you. I was reading a little testimony of you the other day. And you know, you all were preaching the gospel five years before I was born and I'm an old man. So I, I certainly do respect this little old couple here from here in Ohio, brother and sister kid, and nearly all of you know them. She sends down every once in a while and gets a big bunch of prayer claws that are afraid over to send to her people that she knows that's sick and gets the testimonies back, just a little old mother and dad in the gospel. So happy to see them. I got a letter last night. Uh, from my friend Rosella Griffin here from um, Joliet, Illinois, who was one of America's noted alcoholics. That was the alcoholic synonymous could do nothing for her. And the doctors in Chicago could do nothing for her. And one night she was brought to the meeting and the Holy Spirit revealed all these things to her and healed her. And now she's a jail worker in Chicago, in the slums, for the kingdom of God. Her little friend, I believe, one brought the other. I don't know which it is. And if I'm not mistaken, that's you're sitting there tonight. Also, a dope addict, I believe it was. And say, Brother Sullivan, if you don't know them, you must get their testimonies before the people. There might be others here that's drank and dope fiends and so forth can see what God can do. It is no secret. Is that your husband, sister? So happy to see you, my brother. And so Christ has certainly made a difference in that life. Certainly has. It's from the, the rat holes of the earth to the highest pinnacle that a person can be led to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is no secret what God can do. And you must, by all means, Brother Sullivan, get their testimony. I'm sure all of you like to hear it, wouldn't you? How from dope to... What she is now, a saint of God, her and her husband. Not only that, I was telling Rosella was a, a worker in the slums of Chicago. They are evangelists on the fields, preaching the gospel. I tell you, that makes my heart jump for joy. Wait till I get to shake your hands on the other side. That's when we're going to have a wonderful time. We won't have to go home because we are home. <laughs> and the sun will never go down in that city. No, sir, it'll always be light. We're struggling for that time. And as I said last night, since I've been saved, I've always felt like it. I was in a nightmare somewhere. There's just something beyond if I could just wake up to it. We will one of these days wake up to the reality of God and standing in His presence and saved by His grace, conformed to His image. Oh, what a time that will be. I'm happy to be here tonight, again, to be in fellowship with these ministers, the different ones of you, my brethren, and with Brother Sullivan. And he's a Kentuckian, but he got forgiveness for it, and come on and become a minister. <laughs> Not happen to be that I'm a Kentuckian too, so <laughs> I'll just show you there's a lot of them here. How many from Kentucky? Raise up your hand. Is there a Hoosier in the bunch? <laughs> My mother runs a boarding house, and or she did. And I, one day I went down there, and every one she had of 23 men were Kentuckians. I went up to my church, and I said, all from Kentucky, stand up. And the whole congregation stood up. 
Well, Kentucky has something that they have offered to the Lord. Been many saints come from Kentucky. In the early days, the pioneer days when they came in the wagons with horses and over across the hills, and they produced some great preachers and great saints of God. It'll be well represented in glory when we get there. Now, I trust that we, as the oncoming generation, the offsprings from them, that we're not ashamed of our forefathers or the gospel that they preached. And let's stand for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Leaving those things are behind. Let's press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. That's my heart's desire, is to meet that high calling. Now, last night I just spoke to you a little. And tonight it's a healing service. Uh, we would, we don't claim now, if there happens to be someone by who would not understand that, we do not heal anyone. We only pray for the sick. I've seen tens of thousands of people heal, but I never did heal one. I've had some direct answers to prayer for praying for the sick, but I never healed anyone. And I don't believe that lays in the power of man. It's a finished work that Christ did at Calvary. Healing doesn't lay within man, not even to doctors, hospitals, medicine. There's no doctor, hospital, or medicine can heal. God's the healer. Medicines will aid. A doctor can set a bone, diagnose a case, and give medicine to kill germs. But God does the healing. He could set my arm, but he couldn't heal my arm. He could pull the tooth, but not heal the place to come out of. He might operate and take a appendix out, but he cannot heal the place he cut. It takes God to do that. And we're not against doctors, hospitals, or medicine. We are for them and praying for them that God will give more knowledge to his servants. But when a doctor has come to the end of the road and his medicine will not help the patient any longer and he pronounces the patient has to die, I believe that patient has a right to come to the great physician and ask for mercy. And that's the type I pray for. God's children, my friends, and the doctor's patient is what I come to pray for. And I don't only pray for it myself, I don't even credit it the healings to the, my prayers. I credit to the prayers of all the people that's in the audience that's praying at the same time for the people I'm praying for. It's together we stand. It was when it, after Pentecost, when they had assembled in one place and all with one accord began to pray that the Holy Spirit shook the building where they were assembled together. See, together we stand. We're Kentuckians. Together we stand. Divided we fall. So many times getting into meetings, coming to meetings, letters come to me. What's your doctrine, Brother Branham? He was a Baptist. Do you still believe in eternal security? Are you Jesus only? Have you, uh, do you baptize uh, at all? Or do you sprinkle? I say this. I have one doctrine, the great fundamental evangelical doctrine of the Bible. I've never left a meeting to my knowing with any confusion, I've always tried to leave the meeting with sweetness of the Holy Spirit. Never tried to make proselyte, I never tried to take someone's disciples. The thing I try to do is add the sinner to any church that he wants to go to. As long as he's born again of the Spirit of God, he's my brother and she's my sister. And uh, doctrines, I have my own ideas, but I keep them to myself. And then when I come here or anywhere else, one, if I take sides one way or the other, it would be, I would be throwing all the influence that the Lord has given me to one certain denomination. Therefore, I don't take sides with any of them. I stay on sides with all of them and try to pull them together and say, we are brethren. Amen. We are brethren. And that's the reason that I don't take sides or, or take issues. All of us, we fundamental people. We absolutely believe in the great evangelical doctrines. We believe that there is a Savior who saves. There is a Christ who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. We do believe in divine healing. We believe in the second coming. There's the things that I preach on, is that. 
Let the rest of it, that's up to the pastors, the shepherds, to lead the flocks the way that he sees to do it. I'm an evangelist. Now, we are fixing to uh, open the Word, or read the Word. Only one is able to open the Word, and that's he that was slain from the foundation of the world, who came to him that sat up on the throne and taken the book out of his right hand, and was worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer while we speak to him. How many would like to be remembered tonight that God will give you faith to be healed tonight? Raise your hand. Say, remember it, Brother Random. God, I'm raising my hands. That's good. Lord, thou art God since the beginning, and you never had a beginning. For you're the eternal one. You never did begin or you never will end. When the sin has heaped itself in the earth until the stars refuse to shine and that the seas has wept themselves into deserts, you'll still be God. And we approach Thee tonight in that all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus, Thy loving Son, who came and took our place willingly and become a propitiation for our sins. And tonight we feel that we are washed by the water of the Word and are cleansed and candidates for the Holy Spirit and His divine works. And we come tonight with open hearts to receive him, knowing that we are living in the closing days of the world's history, knowing that at any minute Jesus could come, and we see the earth in the turmoil, nations against nations. And now there's a division amongst churches, there's a division amongst peoples and individuals, but the house of God should be united as one. Onward, Christian soldiers, said the poet, we are not divided, all one body we. So we pray tonight, Heavenly Father, that these who have gathered here for the purpose of being healed by your power, and we contend for that that you have risen from the dead and is alive tonight among us. We are so glad that we're not worshiping a tradition of some pagan god that's made out of wood that can't speak or hear, but we are worshiping our resurrected Jesus, who is the Son of Jehovah who was made sin in our stead, and he was wounded for our transgressions, and with his stripes we were healed. And we pray tonight that he'll manifest himself, that he is not dead but alive among us, and will heal the sick and the afflicted, and save the lost, and bring courage to the weak. Get glory unto thyself, Lord. While we commit the service to thee now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Take the written word and sink it into our hearts and mix it with the oil of the Spirit that it might bring forth great results. May every person that held their hands up and those who could not hold their hands, may this be the night of perfect deliverance. May there not be a feeble person in our midst when we leave. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I would desire your prayers as I speak just briefly for the prayer line. We want it to be just as long as possible. And tomorrow night, we will continue on praying for the sick each night and maybe in different ways. <clears throat> now, I'd like to see if there's any people here who has never been in one of my services where I prayed for the sick before. Would you just raise your hand? That's never been in one of the services. There's a good many here that's never been in the meetings. Now, thank you. I do not claim to be a healer, 
very much contrary to that, I believe that healing is all healing is divine healing. I believe there's no other healing but divine healing. For if that isn't so, then God told something wrong when he said, I'm the Lord who heals all your diseases. See? He heals all. That doesn't shut off the doctor's work or so forth. That brings it in. He just makes it ready for God's healing. Washes it out or sets the bone and gets ready for the healing. But God has to create cells, and there's only one creator, and that's God. I do not believe that there be power in any minister's hands to heal a person, but it's a commission of the Lord that we should lay hands on the sick. And I believe that healing is a finished work that's been completed for 2,000 years. When Jesus died at Calvary, he saved you from sin and healed your sickness. And ever blessing, redemptive blessing, is yours by faith in that finished work. See? It's yours if you can believe it. As one said some time ago, I don't believe in divine healing. I don't care what you say. I said, certainly not. It wasn't given to unbelievers. It was given to believers. He that believeth, there is a question mark. If you're a believer, divine healing is for you. If you're not a believer, it's not for you. And each person in here that's sick does not have to come to this platform. They do not have to do one thing but confess their sins to God. Sin is unbelief. We all know that. Because you smoke, drink, gamble, commit adultery, that's not sin. That's the attributes of your unbelief. See, It's because you don't believe Jesus is the reason you do those things, if you do. But if you believe him, you don't do those things is because you are a believer. So there's only one initial sin, and that's unbelief. And if you believe God, then you can just accept it anywhere you may be. God is everywhere. I've chosen tonight for just a little short text. I trust that you'll catch what the Holy Spirit is trying to say in this. It's found in St. John, the sixth chapter, and the twentieth verse. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. It must have been that great strong fisherman called Peter, who a few hours before had pushed the boat off of the bank into the sea of Galilee, and then walking up from the bow of the boat which was headed into the shore, taking his seat by the side of his brother Andrew and picking up an oar. For in those days they were a man on one side and one on the other, maybe six or eight men oared the little boats, what they call ships. And as they pushed out and pulled the boat around into the position to cross the sea, and they was waving goodbye to those Christian friends, believers on the bank, and we were taught here that it was almost dark, and they had been bidden to go over to the other side. And as soon as the last one quit waving and they turned back to their homes, it must have been young John, as he was the youth of the group, with his hand on his face, said something like this. I don't see how he did it. For I looked and seen there was only five of those little biscuits and two little small fishes. But how did he break that and feed five thousand?
5,000 men besides the women and children. And I watched his hands for I was standing near each time I come with a basket and seen him take up a little biscuit and break off a, a chunk of it and put it in the basket and reach back and break out another piece. He was young. He said, I just can't understand how there was more bread baked. Oh, if he would have had an oven and had baked it and, and had the wheat and so forth, I might have understood it. But he didn't. He bypassed the possession of and the regular natural run of raising the wheat and grinding it and milling it and sifting it and sharpenings and salt and seasonings and put it in the oven and break it. He just broke it and handed it. Then one in the back, maybe it was Bartholomew, said something like this, You know he that proves that he is the Son of Jehovah. For we are taught in our holy scriptures that our forefathers lived forty years on created bread that come from God out of heaven. And as the little boat moved on, the conversation continued how that he must be somewhere in contact with God. Of course, God was in him, working his will. The scripture says that God was in Christ reconciling himself to the world. And then Peter said, sitting by the side of his brother Andrew, looked over to him and said, Andrew, when you first come and told me of such a man that you had found, I doubted your word. But when I walked up in his presence and he said, Your name is Simon. Your father's name is Jonas. That settled it with me. For we are taught in our holy scriptures that Moses, the one that we believe, wrote unto us and said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet liken unto me. And I knew that the Messiah must be a God prophet. And when I knew that he did not know me, and that was the first time he'd ever saw me, and yet called me by my name and told me about my daddy, I knew that was him. And then one setting about towards the stern of the boat by the name of Nathaniel, put his shoulders against Philip as they were pulling together and said, Philip, I could testify something like Simon. For when I was out under that tree praying when you found me, and you told me the story that this man had told Simon, his name, I almost laughed at you. I could not believe it. And then when you said that he'd come from such a low place as Nazareth, then I knowed you must be out of your mind. So I said, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? I shall never forget what you said. Come and see. That's a good thing. That's a good answer to anybody. Don't criticize it. Come find out for yourself and then examine it by the Scriptures. The Scriptures are always right. Jesus said, They are they that testify of me. And he said, As we went along the road, I shall never forget our conversation. 
And I was still in doubt. Philip, though I knew you were a just and an honest man, and you were truthful, and I believe that you'd just been carried away with some kind of a fanaticism. But when I walked into his presence and heard him speak, he spoke different from any man I ever heard. For he spoke like he had an authority and he knew what he was talking about. And he said as I walked up when he turned those eyes and looked at me and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. It almost floored me. And I said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, That settled it for me once forever. I knew that was the Messiah, that was the God prophet that Moses said would rise. I don't care what others think. That settled it for me. I believed it because of Holy Scripture's talk. And Philip, that's why I fell on my face and said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Because I know the Scripture said that that would be the sign that would show that he was the one that Moses spoke of. Then Andrew must have stopped oaring just a moment. And he said, Brethren, did not our hearts burn within us when we seen him no more than a man weary in his way? And he sat down on the well and he was so tired he couldn't go down into Samaria with us that day. When we went to get some diddles for him. And how we talked on the road about how we loved him. And before they would even give us the food, here come a woman down the street screaming. Come see a man who's told me the things I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Isn't that him? For he said to me when I was out there to get a bucket of water. I just went to the well like I always do. And I heard someone ask me for a drink. And I looked over and seen a middle-aged Jew. And he said to me, Woman, bring me a drink. And I said to him, It's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such. And he said, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for a drink. I'd give you water that you don't come here to draw. And we got to talking about the different denominations and the places to worship. And he told me that God was a spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Then I shall never forget, she might have said this, when he turned those piercing eyes against me and he said, Woman, go get your husband and come here. And I said to him, I don't have any husband. And you men know how I have lived. And he said, no, you have no husband because you've had five husbands. And the one that you're now living with is not yours. And of course she'd say something like this. I was surprised we don't have such in our churches today. And I turned quickly to look at him and I said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know the Messiah will be a prophet. For when he comes, he'll tell us such things. And this is the words that he said. I'm he that speaks to you. 
Now, gentlemen of the city, you scribes and scholars, take it upon yourself. Did not Moses say that the Lord God in these last days would raise up a prophet likened unto him? Isn't this he? Isn't this the sign of the very Messiah? This is him. Oh, how they must have turned loose the oars for a few moments and rejoiced to know that that had been a great day. They had fellowship with him that day. Oh, it's always a great day when you fellowship with Jesus. There's always something left on your heart that you can never be the same. You'll never forget them hours of fellowship. Must have been almost completely dark when there was a sack of money jingled at the very stern of the boat and an ill-tempered looking fella raised up and said, Just a minute, gentlemen. Of course we know who that fellow is. Always somebody to break up the fellowship. Judas. And he said, I'm well acquainted with many fine rabbis. I know many fine priests in our land. And there's none of them, no seminary can ever point out that he ever darkened their doors. And we have no record. And you too were standing present. When you heard the rabbi say that this fellow is Beelzebub, of course we know we have to take his claims. He claimed that his father was God. But there's no evidence of that because usually children that are born out of wed usually have phenomenal things that happen to them. And we could be deceived, gentlemen, because this man could be a fortune teller or he could be some evil spirit that's doing these things. And we could be deceived about that time the wind began to blow. The waves begin to come up high on the boat. Satan's servant had the floor. And there's always trouble when he gets that floor. The waves come in angrily. Harder and harder the winds blew. No doubt Satan himself being with his lizard eyes, saying, I'll scare them stiff and then drown them. I've got them away from him now. And the winds got so contrary until the boat was all waterlogged and half full of water and the oars was breaking. And the great white caps, as they rose up, just swooped the little boat from one wave to another. All hopes is gone. And when all hopes is gone, after they was pressed from one wave to another, and perhaps there's people sitting here tonight in that same condition. Maybe you long to find God, and you've been swept from one church to another. From one, from one denomination to another, taking your letter from church to church, from Methodist to Baptist to Presbyterian to Lutheran to Pentecostal to Nazarene, just wave after wave. Or maybe you have been swept from one doctor's office to the other. The angry waves of sickness has swept you to a doctor. 
doctor and he'd look you over and say, there's nothing I can do. And another way will send you to a clinic only to hear the physician say, your case is advanced. There's nothing can be done for you. But when all hopes is gone, they happen to notice they seen someone coming walking on the water. That's the way he does it. Right at the last moment, the darkest hour, Jesus comes along. And he come walking on the water. Now the tragedy of this scene is that the people without hope was sent hope and was afraid of it when he got there. Just about like today. The only hope they had was the mercy of Christ. Their boat was sinking, their oars was gone. And it was at the mercy of the devil on the sea and a storm twisting him. And the only hope they could have was coming to them and they were afraid of it. They afraid that it was a ghost. Some sort, as we'd say it in the street language, a spook come walking on the water. And they cried out with fear. But there come a voice from there, that all-sufficient voice that takes the stillet, said, Fear not, it is I. Be of a good courage. That's the same one that comes to us tonight. That voice when we are at the end of our wits, when we are at the end of our journey from church to church, bringing our letter from church to the Methodist, to the Baptist, to the Presbyterian, to the Pentecostals, and so, so. Listen, all them churches are fine, but that's still not the answer. When you went from doctor's office to doctor's office to clinic, that's all right. But that still isn't your answer. They turned you down. The answer is in the building tonight. The Holy Spirit of God. Don't be afraid of it. It doesn't make fanatics. It takes fanatics to make saints out of them. Don't be afraid of it. It's the only hope that you have. You might have heard them crying out and say, that's fanaticism out there at the Chautauqua. Don't go near it. Don't you believe it? You search the Scriptures, for they are they that testify of Christ. Compare word with word and spirit with spirit. For the Holy Spirit can only bring forth the works of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do the works of my Father, then believe the works. You can't believe me, believe the works, he said. They thought he was gone. The devil thought he was gone. Because he said he had to go rest a little while. He was tired. And he had to go rest and pray. I can imagine some of them said, we oughtn't to have left without him. And that's a good policy. You'll always get in trouble if you start somewhere without him. Because the devil's on your track. So he, he came. Why? He had not went to pray or to rest. The preachers and many people trying to tell us today, not all preachers, not all people, but many try to tell us, too many, that he doesn't care no more. He's gone to rest. And the world just left up to the church to do what they will. But he hadn't did that. He climbed the highest mountain in Palestine and had been watching them all the time. He isn't dead. He's alive. He's climbed so high. How are 
you go, more you can see. And he's went all the way to the Father's throne and sat down on the right hand. He watches. When the little ship, he said, was out in the midst of the sea and the waves were contrary, he was sitting up there watching it. He isn't sitting on a mountain tonight, but he's sitting in glory. His eyes on the spell, and I know he watches us. He knows how contrary the ways is to you. He knows what the doctor said. And he cares for you. He loves you. And he'll come at the last hour. But don't be afraid of him when he comes. Accept him. When they finally got the scare off of him, and he got into the boat, there was a sudden peace. Oh, what a sudden peace it is! To a troubled heart that's went from place to place to try to find something, and when they stop for a few minutes and let the Holy Spirit come into their heart. What a sudden peace it brings. All the turmoil of this church and that church, right, and this congregation, that it's all settled. And you know your Redeemer liveth because He lives in you. When the man went to the doctor's office of the woman and the little baby, and the doctor's done everything that lays within his power, don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit and His promise. Or he is watching you. He said in the scriptures here, He'll not leave us nor forsake us. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus that climbed up on the mountain to watch that ship full of people has climbed the ramparts of glory to watch this congregation tonight and your action towards His Spirit and His Word. Before He left, He said, A little while and the world won't see Me no more. Yet ye shall see Me, the believer, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the age. Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Christ who cares. The same Christ who watches over you. The same Christ who performs the same miracles, bringing the same results. Did not he say in St. John 14, 12, He that leaveth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not dead, but he's alive. And if he is in our midst tonight, he'll bring the same results that he did when he was sure on earth. That we might leave this building tonight saying the same thing. That they said them who come from Emmaus on that first resurrection, he did something just like he did it before he was crucified. They know that it was Jesus. Tonight, if he is alive, and he's not dead, but he's among us, he'll do the same things he did before his crucifixion, for he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid of some evil thing. It's according to the Scriptures. Be not afraid. It's not spooky. Be not afraid. It's not fortune tellers. Be not afraid. It's not fanaticism. It's I, says the Holy Spirit. It's God's Spirit giving witness that Jesus is alive and in His church. Do you believe this? Then let us pray as we trust Him. O Lord, who brought again Jesus from the dead and has presented Him to every generation down through the ages, and tonight we're in the shadows of His coming, the second time in glory. 
And as a shadow begins to come close, or the positive that's making the shadow, the object, it becomes more plainer all the time. We cannot look back to the ministry of our great friend Martin Luther and brother. And we cannot look back to our brother John Wesley, or Moody, or Sankey, or Finney, or Calvin, or Knox. They reflected your gospel in their days. And that same gospel is reflected tonight in a more powerful way because the Lord is soon coming. The object is becoming to blend into the shadow. And they become one, the ministry and Christ. Father God, may this congregation not be afraid, but may they believe that you are risen from the dead and that you are here to help each individual. I, your servant, Lord, by a commission of an angel and a divine gift, can only reflect as you will reflect. But may it be done tonight, Lord, that the people might know and not be afraid those that are in distress, be not afraid. It is I. That same Jesus who ministered promised that in these days that the very signs that he did would be done again to give the sign to the Gentiles as it was did then to the Samaritans and the Jews, for they were the only ones looking for the Messiah. And you manifested yourself in that manner. Now you're infinite God. You're no respect of person. Whatever you do, you do perfect every time. And you did it perfect. That's how you picked your people in the last day for them that was looking for you, Jew and Samaritan. And now, Lord, choose your people tonight in the Gentiles. And let your Holy Spirit move and perform and work the works of Christ. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Be not afraid. It's I. And tonight the I is the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit of God that's come down in to live into the church. God first lived in a pillar of fire. Then he was made flesh by a virgin birth and dwelt in Christ. Then at the going away of Christ, he sanctified a church that was born sexually, that he might sanctify this people and live in them, his presence, the Holy Spirit, to carry on the work. And tonight the Holy Spirit is here finishing up, binding up, finishing the work, sealing up the book, for the last name will go in it someday, and he'll never add an extra. If you're not, your name's not on the Lamb's Book of Life tonight, my dear degraded friend. Please ask God to put your name there now while we pray for the sick. Now, I believe... Uh, how many prayer cards, Gene, did... Or, who, Billy, are you there? Did you give them out? One to a hundred. All right. They give out a hundred prayer cards. Now, you hold your card. If you're not called tonight, you'll be called. You'll be coming right up here to the platform. We can't... Tonight, I want to... I want to do one thing. Tomorrow night I want to change and do another, and the next night another. All of you have read my book on the different things that the Holy Spirit... There's one prophet. It's not gifts of prophecy, gifts of prophet. But there is gifts of healing. It's in the plural. The other is singular. Now, we cannot bring all at once, so... I promise that, that I'd let you out as early as I could, so let's just start from number one and run, run them through. Who has prayer card number one? Would you raise your hand? Somebody. What's the letter? A. 
A number one. Someone here that's got a prayer card, A number one. If you can stand on your feet. You have it, sir. All right, would you come right over here? Um, we're not going to be able to stand too many. I, is that all the room you got? Just right in there. Right through the back. All right. While this man is making his way out, who has prayer card number two? Would you hold your hand up? Number two. There's just any word. The lady way over here. All right, lady. Would you take your place right here? And we are strangers to one another. I suppose we don't know each other. God does know us. Now, this man standing here by me is a total stranger to me so far as I know God knows. I have never seen him in my life. If I did, I don't know it. And he just witnessed that we were strangers to one another. How many in the prayer line are, each one of you knows that I don't know, you raise up your hand. All along the prayer line. All right? How many out there in the audience knows that I don't know you, that you're sick? Raise up your hand. All right? Just so you'll see that it's the Lord Jesus. Now, if he will do, if this man's sick, He's needy, whatever he is. I don't know. I don't know what he's here for. But if the Holy Spirit will reveal to this man after this message, then all of you will believe that he's the same Messiah. Now, he'll never work through me until he works through him. See? It's his faith. It takes your faith out there. I wish I could speak to each one of you. I can. It's your faith that touches him. And then he just takes me, and I don't know what I'm saying. He, I know what I'm saying. I don't mean that. I mean that I don't have an understanding of what I'm going to say. I just say what he says. And there it is. You have it. See? It's a yielding to the Holy Spirit. If yielding to the Holy Spirit will manifest Jesus here as Messiah, won't he manifest him as healer and all that he is? Now, Lord... It's your service, and these are your people, and I am your servant. Now, let the people see, these who are so sick and needy, that they might know that you are the Son of God, and you are not dead, but you're alive tonight to manifest the same signs and wonders that you promised. The books will soon be closed, the doors will be shut, and judgment will be on hand. We see it hanging in the hangers today, Lord. We know that it's near. So may there in the audience tonight, Father, may be one person who is not saved. May the presence of the Lord Jesus bring that person to conviction that they will receive the Holy Spirit this night. We ask this for God's glory. And now, Lord, let the Holy Spirit give to us these things that we ask, that the people might know that you're God, and you live forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, watch this way real close. And be in prayer. But now whatever is said, you do just what it says. I don't care what condition you are in, how crippled you are, how what, if it speaks to you, now watch, it might reveal something. Now watch that. It's just revealing. But then if you hear it say, Thus saith the Lord. You jump, do ever what it tells you to do. You, you go right just as quick as you can. How many has been healed that way in our meetings? Let's see your hands go up so they can witness. See? Many. Watch it. See, one thing is a person's faith, and it's revealing what's the trouble. Then I can pray for that person. But when it calls in that audience with, Thus saith the Lord, you watch it and do just exactly what it says. If it says, Bow your head, bow your head. It's whatever it says do, you do it. Now, because it be the Holy Spirit. Now, you can realize, you Christians, where I'm standing. Here's God's Word that teaches this thing to be the truth. It's the truth. Christ is the same yesterday, day, and forever. Now, if He'll prove that He is here, and that He can prove it by this one person, it ought to make every one of you realize that you're in the presence of Jesus Christ and accept your healing. Isn't, is that true? Raise your hand if it's true. It's the truth. It's true. Now the man and I are strangers, but God knowing us both. I have no idea, sir, what you're here for. But God does know. 
But if somehow I can yield myself to his Holy Spirit, and he will reveal to you like he did to Simon Peter, or to Nathaniel, or to the woman at the well, or to the woman with the blood anyway, see, just like he did then. See, he said he wasn't a healer. He said the Son can do nothing in himself for what he sees the Father doing. I do nothing in myself, he said. But I do just as the Father shows me. What I see, not hear, see. It's a vision. And if he'll tell me what your trouble is, or something about you that you know what I don't know, if it's anything, I don't know it. But if he'll reveal it, will you accept it and believe for it? May the Lord grant it to you, brother. For we are both man. We've both got to meet God. We got to stand in his presence someday. The man's trouble, what he's looking for, me to pray for him, is an extreme nervousness. That's right. And he also has some sort of a cough. It's an asthmatic cough. It bothers him much at night. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Raise up your hand. Do you believe that? The man's a witness. Do you believe that that was Christ that did that? Christ permitted that spirit to make that? You say you might have just been uh, guessing at that. No, I wasn't. Let us turn to the man again. I don't remember what it was, but I believe it was nervousness. Yeah, that is right. He's been nervous all of his life. But he's developed a cough. Yes, it's an asthmatic cough. He raises up and coughs hard. And then there's something about his arm. or it's, No, it's low blood pressure. He's suffering with low blood pressure. That's exactly the truth. That's thus saith the Lord. I'll tell you something else. This is not your home. You're not from here. You're not from this state even. You're from Kentucky. You believe God can tell me who you are as same as you know Simon Peter? Then, Mr. Martin, you can return home and be made well. Do you believe with all your heart? Then just raise up your hands and worship Him. Say, Lord, I believe. All my heart, I believe, Lord. Help the people tonight, Lord, to understand. And may each person be healed. May the great Holy Spirit begin to bathe every sick person just now into His goodness and His mercy. Through Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Now be alert, be in prayer, as the Holy Spirit reveals, you make it yourself. What he's doing here, he's doing out there also. How many of you sick out there, you say, in having a prayer card? Raise up your hand. Pray then just a minute. Here's a lady sitting right here in front of me. She's black-headed. Got glasses on, wearing a yellow dress. She's suffering with headaches. That's right. That's right. Stand up. Raise your hand up, lady. Stand up on your feet. You were praying that God would call you. You're healed now of your headaches. Go home and be well. Jesus Christ. Now tell me what she touched. She touched the high priest. She's 20 yards from me. But she's in reach of the high priest. He's raised from the dead. And he's here. Now you out there, without your cards, do the same. You believe, sister? You believe that God could reveal to me if this could be a, another, just like the woman at the well? He could tell what your trouble is the same as he could tell what her trouble was. Frankly, you're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. That person's really sick. They're in the hospital. It's a woman. A younger woman. It's your daughter-in-law. She's got something wrong with her bones. Something spreads through her bones. That's right. Then I see a young fellow 
little one. That's a grandson. Like a Bright's disease or something. You're praying for him. That's thus saith the Lord. Go believe him and you shall have what you've asked for. Have faith in God. All right. Just a lady. Do you believe, my sister, with all your heart? If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, then you'll accept it. Does anybody here know the lady? Oh, sure. All right, you know her trouble then. You believe now. I couldn't heal because I'm not a healer. But it's a gift. See, I cannot... God has already did. He's already healed. If Jesus is standing here tonight and you'd say, Lord, I want you to heal me, he'd say, I've already done it. When I died at Calvary, I paid the price for your healing. I set you free from your, he- from your sickness when I died at Calvary. He would have to say that because that's what he done. He did that once for all. But he can make himself knowing that he was Messiah. And that's what he's trying to do now, to let the people know that this, what we believe to be the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of Christ in us. Doing, if the Spirit of a, of a gangster is in us, we'd do the work of a gangster. If the Spirit of a, of a singer was in us, we'd sing. If the Spirit of Christ is in us, we'll do the works of Christ. Your trouble is nervousness and a throat trouble. That's thus saith the Lord. That's true. You got something else on your heart. And you want me to pray for somebody. You want me to take that handkerchief and send it? If God will tell me who it is and what it is, it's your daughter. She's paralyzed. And she's just had a baby. She might know me to be your, uh, the prophet of the Lord. Take that handkerchief and put on her. Don't doubt. You can have what you ask for. God bless you. God be with you. Let's just praise him. Raise our hands up and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You're good to us, Lord. You're here and you want us to worship you. And we can't hold it any longer, Lord. You're just so good to make known to us that you're alive. And in this great hour, when all hopes are gone, yet you are our hope. We're not afraid of you, Lord. We worship you. We love you. Come into our little bark tonight and give us faith. Give us healing. Give us your spirit. And satisfy us with that everlasting potion. Grant it, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just let him come into your little bark that's being floated around. But doubts and cares, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to accept it. Just accept it. Excuse me. You believe, do you, with all your heart? You believe that God can show me what your trouble is? One thing you won't pray for is your eyes. But of course, you got glasses on also. But it's eyes is what's troubling you. But here's something that don't show. You got back trouble. You believe God, if God will tell me what caused that, will it increase your faith? You fell. That's right. Now go, you're healed. Praise Jesus Christ, thank you. Just believe with all your heart. Have faith in God. How do you do so? I don't know you, and perhaps you don't know me. That's right. But God knows us both. You think God could reveal to you what you're here for, sir? Yes, sir. If he could tell, see Philip coming and saying, or Nathaniel said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. And he said, Thou art a rabbi, how'd you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, saw you. That same Lord Jesus, his spirit, now his body, is at the right hand of God, setting up there as a high priest. But he sent back his Holy Spirit to represent him. And you see, as Jesus becomes drawing near, like the shadow of my hand, see how dim it is? But watch how bright it comes when it gets real close. See, it isn't the day of Martin Luther, John Wesley, or down through the age, but this is in the age of the coming. Just before destruction, hit Sodom and Gomorrah, which this nation is a type of, a man came down, which was actually God in flesh, 
and there was a, three angels. Two of them went on down in Sodom to preach to the elect, or to the just an ordinary Christian, like a modern Billy Graham or so forth, not performing miracles, but just preaching. But there's one stayed back with Abraham and his group, which was the elected. Watch what that angel done. Listen. Watch just before the fire fell. He looked at Abraham and he said, Where is Sarah thy wife? A stranger. How do you know he was married? How do you know his wife's name was Sarah? He was a stranger. And Abraham said, She's in the tent behind you. And the Bible said that Sarah was in the tent behind the angel. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. And Sarah inside the tent within herself laughed. And the angel with his back turned said, why did Sarah laugh? Sarah ran out and said, I didn't laugh. He said, yes, you did. See that witness? A witness to the church that the end was at hand. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. That same thing would return. You're looking at it tonight. Not me, him. You're watching it. You can't see it, but you see it working among the people. It's working with you, seems it's working with me. I couldn't say nothing unless he had said it. And he can't do nothing to you until you believe it. So there you are. The Lord bless. You have trouble with your eye? That's what you won't pray for. You have erectile trouble also. Pie. That is true. If that's right, raise up your hand. You're not from here. You're from Springfield, Ohio. You're a minister, a preacher of the gospel. Reverend Hilbert, return home. I believe you have your request. We bring it to you. God bless you. You believe the Lord Jesus is real? You believe God will heal you that stomach trouble? Well, go eat. Just get that. Let's say How do you do? I don't know you. God does. Your baby? It's a mighty pretty little baby. But without the help of God, it must die. It's got heart trouble. That's right. And there's a greater thing in that needed in your family, that you need to be a Christian. You're not a Christian. You're a sinner. That's good faith for a sinner to bring your baby because it's the love of a mother that would call it out. Will you accept Jesus as your Savior? Has he become your Savior now? You confess your sins and promise. If you let your baby live, you'll raise that baby in a Christian home for the glory of God. O oh Lord God, Elohim, the great Jehovah God, heal this child. Heal the parents. Forgive their sins. May this baby live to the honor and glory of God. Perhaps this was done to bring this family to you, Lord. Now that they've come, I pray for mercy for the baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, sister. Take up your place. You are, do you see, I regarded you, sister, the Holy Spirit, then, see, your sister now. Be on your own. And God be with you. Some minister seer, baptized her in the Christian faith. If thou canst believe, you believe the heart trouble will leave you and you get well? Yes. Just keep moving and saying, praise be to God. You got a nervous heart yourself. You believe that God will make you well? Just go on praising God, thanking God and believe. My, another. You believe that he'll make you well too? All right. Just a moment. Something happened in the audience.
the lady sitting right down here towards the post, gray head with a blue dress on, got sinus trouble. You believe the Lord will heal you, sister? Do you believe it? The lady behind her with a green dress on, maybe she'll accept the blessing. You have high blood pressure right here, sister, sitting right here, looking right at me. You, looking around, yes. Stand up and believe it. All right, there you are. Now go home and be well. You believe God? Have faith. Having trouble with your stomach? Let me show you something. Let me have your hand. Now you're human, just as I am. See how my hand looks? I put my hand on yours. I watch it swell. See how red it turns and swells up? Take your hand off. I look how it goes. Now take this other hand. Put that hand on it. There's no difference. It doesn't look that way, does it? Now put this hand on it. Watch it start swelling. Look at the little white things running over. See? That's your stomach trouble you got off there. Now, do you believe? Will, you, will it encourage you? If I ask God, you look at my hand and see if it happens. Come here. Now you watch my hand. Now you see it. Now, where's Billy? Come here, Billy. Take your other hand. I know what's wrong with you, but I want your, your other hand. Put this hand on. Nothing. He's as much human as you are. Put this hand on. Nothing. Put this hand on. Nothing. Lay this hand on. Oh, there's something there. See? That's the first gift that was given. See? To make known to the people. Now, come here. Watch the hand. Let's bow our hands. Lord Jesus, as the woman's looking at my hand, we don't want to ask for miracles. But we know that you're God, and she's watching my hand. Let it come to pass, Lord, that while I am praying, that you will manifest the healing to the woman as you take it away from her. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave the woman. Come out of her. Now, before I open my eyes, I've never moved my hand, but the hand quit vibrating. It stopped, didn't it? Now, you be the judge. Now, tell it, is it gone? Yes, it is. Now, watch. Put this hand on now. There it is. Now, put this hand on. Just exactly the same. Your stomach trouble's over. You're healed. Go home and be well. Now, you were trying to look in on that. I don't know nothing about it. The Spirit leaves me now for a minute for that part of the sermon. You've read my book, have you? All right. You know how I said the first gift would be make known to the people by taking their hand? Then it would come to pass that they'd know the very secret of their heart. And they'd believe that. Because it has to. Because it tells them. Now, give me your hand. I'm not going to ask for discernment. I'm just going to put your hand. Go up here. I'll lay your hand on. I don't know even what's wrong. But God does. Now, look here. Look at my hand. See it swelling? See the little white things jumping over there? I watch them go take my hand off. Now, I'll put your other hand on. Not there now. Not there now. Now put that hand on. Because he told me your right hand, that's your pledge of faith that I've told you the truth. It's my left hand next to my heart to God. See? That's why I come out here. Now you want me to tell what your trouble is? I don't know. But just a moment. Just, I, just relax and don't think. See, if, you, if I think myself, then it's wrong. I just don't think. I just wait. Female trouble. Ladies trouble. That's right, raise up that hand. See, that's discernment another way. Healing is in gifts. How many ever seen that happen? Let you have in other meetings, I'm sure. Now, you be the judge. Come here. It's been so to encourage you. You watch. I'll lay my hand right here. So you see it's not positionally the way I hold the hand, see. It's just the same, isn't it? Now take your hand off, see. I take the other hand laid just exactly the way that was. Not a thing. That's his promise. There it comes. Watch it. See it? Now that arm feels just like it's numb. See? What is it? It's a disease. And right now is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason I never tried to use my own thoughts. 
Let him speak it. He knows what it is. It's a gift of putting himself right back in again. Shows it again. Shows it physically. It takes an effect. That's the reason that ministers, you ministering brethren, are to lay your hands on the sick. That's your anointed. And you're supposed to lay your hands on the sick. That confirms the Bible to make it right. See? You're supposed to lay hands on the sick. Let's see if they... Look here. Can you see my hands in the audience? Now watch here. Take the lady's other hand. Now watch, put this on. Now watch. Now look. You can sit there. Can you? Swells up. Turns red. Little vibrations. This feels like some wood. Just like that. See, and then I... That don't mean anything. I just relax myself. Don't think about it. Then something speaks out and says what it is. It's never failed. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. Then he told... How many ever read my book, My Life Story? Amen. Now, didn't he say that? And many of you remember that was the only thing I had for a long... But he told me way back, years before, when he told me that night, he said, Then it will come to pass you be sincere. You will tell the people the very secrets of their heart. That as Moses was given two gifts... One to turn a stick into a serpent, another to heal his hand of leprosy. You've been given two gifts. There it is. Now, let me have your hand. Just so we had her here. Now, I want you to watch. I don't say I can make it go. I don't know. But if we'll believe, if we'll believe with all our hearts, it will go. Now, you watch. Don't you close your eyes. You just watch the hand. Lord Jesus. Not for a show, but that the people might know that they not be afraid and know that your words are perfect, that your commission, these signs shall follow them and believe if they lay their hands on the sick. Many wondered, how could it be that laying hands on the sick would have anything to do with it? But it's a commission. Anointed servant of God might not be able to discern the spirit every time or the sickness. But he's still anointed to do it just the same. When your name is called, that makes the disease depart. The woman's watching my hand, Father. And I pray that you'll make it manifest into her eyes. And if she's knowing that my hand holding as still as I can. Now let the name of Jesus Christ be magnified. May the power of the devil that's holding my sister, it's written in the scriptures, in my name they shall cast out devils. By the commission of the Holy Spirit, ministered to me by an angel, Satan, leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it's gone. I've never looked at it, but it's gone. Is that right? Is that right, sir? Look, you look at all. Something happened. You knew it. Now go on your road and rejoice and be happy. And if you'll believe the arthritis you had, let right. you also while you were standing there. That's right. That's right. You're on your That's right. And the back trouble you've had. You believe it's healed? Yeah. Just go on your road and rejoice. And say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go eat. The nervousness is coming trouble. So go and rejoice and say, Thank you. Your back's healed and God makes you well. Go rejoice and say, Thank you, dear God. You had back trouble also and Nervous and upset and the little lady's female trouble. Go on your own, rejoice, you're healed. Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you believe? Amen. The little lady sitting right there with lung trouble. Do you believe that God will heal you, lady? Looking right at me? The man right behind her has got leg trouble. Do you believe God will heal you, your leg, sir? Raise up your hand, little lady, if you don't accept your healing. All right? The man right behind him sitting there with high blood pressure. Do you believe that God will heal you, sir? Raise up your hand. Amen. How many in here believe that God will heal them? Do you believe that the Holy Ghost is here? Are you afraid of it? If you're not afraid of it, stand up on your feet and receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, raise up your hands and praise Him. If, don't be ashamed of Him. Lord God, Creator of the heavens and earth, send my Holy Spirit at this minute. I charge the devil in all the powers of sickness to depart from this congregation. Leave them in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, Satan. Every sick person. There's a lady on her feet off the stretcher. Everything that I see in wheelchairs or anywhere else is up on their feet. Glorifying God. Raise up and praise God and be made well. Dr. Sullivan.